Hi everyone, it's been a while since I've actually last recorded myself um, teaching a class because I'm away tomorrow. I'm beginning the first lesson for uh, your next topic on road signs uh, by explaining the key ideas behind uh, the work here. It might be not so clear to see here, but um, the intention is to understand how to calculate the speed of a moving object uh, given distance and time, essentially using what's called the speed triangle. And secondly, how to convert um, different kinds of speeds such as kilometres per hour and metres per second. Hopefully by the end of um, the exercise you can actually do a number of things including how to find the average speed of a vehicle such as a car travelling 370 kilometres in 4.5 hours. The first thing I'm going to need to do here is I need you to, in the uh, folder, I uh, say this, uh, on Simon under the uh, curriculum resources is to go to road signs and within the resources is to first of all download the notes that I need to fill out for, uh, for today's lesson which is motion lesson one for year nine. The other three documents are for, the, um, are for you to self-check your answers as you go through, first of all, uh, the worksheet questions as a handout, and then if you have extra, uh, extra time left over, is to practice some extra questions and check those extra practice questions as well, but they're on the uh, they're on side, they're not handouts. So I'll just quickly just, uh, go to what I mentioned to download, which is the motion lesson one, which is this document here. So just to explain, and you can take your time to read through here, when calculating average speed um, by reading here as an example, let's say a car travels 40 metres in 10 seconds and you want to find its average speed. As a general rule, to find the speed, which is S, it's the distance travelled D divided by the time T, uh, time taken T here. In this case, 40 metres divided 10 seconds, 40 divided 10, its average speed is 4 metres per second. To show you further down here, <coughs> as a as an equation, this uh, speed equation can be written also in different forms. Speed is distance divided by time. Also, distance is speed times time. Notice here I'm using these variables d for distance, s for speed, and t for time. I might also find myself asking, um, being asked a question to answer where I need to calculate time taken. In this case, to find the time, I need to go distance divided by speed. And again, you'll see the same variables uh, t for time, d for distance, and s for speed. That can be a bit tricky to remember these um, the same formula for speed, distance and time and a way of remembering it, as you would have seen in the past for some early work in your physics, is what's called a speed triangle. And here we have, uh, have these three variables. Your distance on the top, your speed and time on the bottom of this triangle here. Very simply, if I'm required to answer a question involving to calculate distance, I cover the variable D and it tells me to find distance, its speed, times time, and on the same line. The question asks to calculate speed of a moving object, I need to know the distance divided by the time taken. And finally, to find the time taken, I cover that variable, it'll simply be distance on the top divided by speed on the bottom. This handout has three examples to, uh, just to show you how this works. The good thing about this video is that <coughs> You can pause and fill this in at your own rate um, and also we need to look back over the ideas I'm trying to explain in this video. Here's an example of trying to find the speed of a car, the distance travelled is 150 kilometres and the time taken is 1.5 hour, uh, 1.4 hours. Any time I uh, solve a physics problem, and you would have seen uh, in my in the previous topic, is I start to summarise the information the question gives me. The 150 kilometres, well that's my distance which is D. The 1.4 uh, hours, well that's my time taken, so that's a T. So therefore, speed um, S is my unknown. If you go back to the formula, you'll see that to find your sp uh, speed, which is speed equals distance divided by time. Speed is distance divided by time in this triangle here. And you can scroll back the page. If I place my hand over S, clearly to find uh, speed is distance on the top of the front of the triangle and time on the bottom. So in this example, which I've done my working, I simply write this. 150 for the kilometres, 1.4 for the hours. I divide by two numbers and because it wants the answer also to the decimal places. I'm writing off my answer as well there. And I need you to not necessarily copy the triangle, but I do need you to copy this in as the working out for this example of finding speed. Once you've done that, then just want you to go ahead on the video and look at the next bit, which is an example of 
how to find distance. So here's my second example. I'm going to read the question. This time to find the distance, it describes a train travelling at an average of 95 km per hour over a period of three hours. And again, given the answer to, in this case, the whole number. So again, if we look back at that triangle, and I'll just put it over here, and hopefully it'll be visible on the screen. Remember that speed is distance divided by time. Let's see what I write here. I say it's uh, distance of speed times time. I cover the variable that's required, which is distance. They're on the same line, therefore they are multiplied. And they are times together. So again, I'm summarising the question. The information says the speed, which is 95, that's my S. My 3 hours is the time taken to my T. All I do is answer the question. 95 kilometres per hour times 3 hours. Because these two cancel out as well, my answer will definitely be in kilometres. That mightn't seem much at this point here regarding uh, these two being the same, but if we don't have the same uh, measure of time, we actually can't necessarily use the formula as it stands, and there may be examples later on I'll need to show you or explain to you. In this case here, 285 kilometres is my answer. So there's my example of finding distance using the speed triangle. My third and final example explained here, and again, if I get you to fill this in before you do the next example and watch as I explain this, is how to calculate time. So my third and final example before I ask you to have a go at the hand and ask that your teacher replacement, which I will give you. This is the third and final to find time. Find the time for a car for a, after travel 200 kilometres at a speed of 75 km per hour. Again, I summarise the information in the question. 200 km is distance and distance is D. 75 km per hour is the speed and speed is S. The question wants to find the time and time is T. If I look at my triangle over here, I've said that time is distance divided by speed. I can check that by covering the letter T there. Distance on top, speed on bottom. So it's definitely distance divided by speed. So in this case here, I go ahead and just answer the question. And it's 200 divided by 75, 2 point, and so on. I also read the question for some practice, which requires me to round off to the number of decimal places. As a rule, we should remember that any number after the cutoff line, 5 or more, requires the value of all the cutoff line to be rounded up one decimal place. 2.67 hours is the answer. Again, I'll get you to fill this in here uh, and then look at the last two notes I've got on the board here regarding use of the speed triangle. And those are just more mathematical things to be mindful of when we do these calculations. So I've now done three examples in each case here regarding the use of the speed triangle to calculate speed or distance or time. The last thing I want to uh, show you before you start this worksheet is in some questions, they will want you to express your answer not as a decimal, but in hours and minutes. What I mean is that in the previous example, as I showed you to calculate time, our answer was a decimal answer. It was 2.67 hours. Now, what about if I was to require to write the answer in hours and minutes to the nearest minute? And this requires looking at the decimal part of the answer. 2.67 hours will be two whole hours plus another 0.67 of an hour. And what I do is, given there are 60 minutes in one hour, I go to 0.67 times the 60 and I get 40.2 minutes. Therefore, to the nearest minutes, that answer will be two hours and 40 minutes. It's worth actually knowing how to be able to round off an answer in hours and minutes as an example here. The last thing I'll show on this handout is that when we talk about speed, the second point on the learning intention was how to be able to swap between this idea of speed in kilometres per hour and our speed in metres per second. Now I don't expect you to 
memorize or know how the weather 3.6 number is used in this converting. But think of that, that there are 3,600 seconds in an hour, just as there are 1,000 meters and a kilometer. So, just to, sh um, to show you how it actually works is that if we know how many minutes and how many seconds are in one hour, and how many meters there are in one kilometer, within those two numbers is where the 3.6 comes as a means of uh, converting between the two here. So, if you see, a qu and when you see a question that requires you to change from one measure of speed to another, you simply look at the converting uh, chart that's described here. So, for example, if a question requires you to change kilometres per hour to metres per second, we simply follow what the chart says here, is to your kilometres per hour divided by 3.6, and that's the equivalent. In other words, if you're travelling at this speed, so for every one hour, we travel 90 kilometres, that is telling you that in one second you travel 25 metres. For this example here, converting the metres per second to kilometres per hour, if you're to travel 25, so 20, so 12.5 metres in one second, turns out you're travelling at a speed of 45 kilometres per hour. So what you're required to do is, after you copy these three examples, the teacher will give you a handout on the speed triangle questions, which is this here. I want you to put your names on each of these sheets and work through these questions. And then, as you work through the work here, as I go back to what I said earlier, I've explained today's lesson about the speed triangle. You do the question on the handout, and what you can do is, if you go to the That's Fast Solutions PDF here, this has my answers and solutions to the working out here. I do expect you to show your full working out with the questions as I've done the examples. If you finish before the end of the lesson, I ask of you to download and have an attempt at some much more tricky, much more challenging questions on this uh, speed triangle by doing this extra questions document here. And to self-correct is to look at my solutions again for this work here. This should take you easily the whole lesson and times uh, left over before the um, before the bell goes. All the best, guys, and see how you go. And when I'm back next time, we'll see if there's any questions I need to help you with. Thank you.